Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Stephen Housen. Today, I'm joined by my grandfather, John Housen, uh, match-going Manchester United fan since 1950. Um, yesterday, obviously, we saw the sad news of the passing of one of Manchester's greatest sons, if not the greatest son, in Nobby Styles, World Cup winner, European Cup winner, League Cup winner, Busby Babe and Manchester United legend. Uh, I had the unfortunate news of informing my granddad of his passing yesterday. Um, which is not something I enjoy doing. Um, and Grandad said he would like to come on and, and talk to us a little bit about Nobby, uh, what he was like as a player, maybe educate some of our younger viewers who, who aren't really sure um, what he was like as a player, why he's a legend at Manchester United. Um, so yeah, take it away if you want, Pop. Well, I, I was very, very lucky um, as a young gun um, in the 50s. Uh, I was playing for the school, obviously, um, captain of the school, 13, 14 year old. And uh, we ended up getting into the semi-final of the Catholic Cup. Uh, all nearly collapsed because we got St. Pat's in the uh, semi-final. Uh, very, very good side at the time. It used to win everything, really. Uh, obviously, Nobby played for St. Pat's and uh, I was captain of Ambrose. Uh, so obviously I shook his hand. Um, but I didn't believe later in life, when I, when I was watching Nobby, obviously I watched him as much as I could, how he played. Um, because when he was a youth, uh, he was a very, very good footballer. An attacking type footballer. Um, and I, I even asked one of the lads when we played in that semi-final, I said, this, this, this lad's a good one. He said, well, he's, he's, he's just got a, a notice to go and play for England youth. So we must have been 15 at the time. I'm the same age as Nobby. Uh, and he was brilliant, brilliant footballer. You could see him as a little bit uh, hard in the tackle, um, which everybody likes, obviously. He wasn't shy. He wasn't shy when he got. He was getting tackled. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I've, I've known of him and... Watched him for a very long time, 60-odd years. Um, couldn't believe how he turned out uh, because I, I didn't think it was that hard. And so we've seen it in um, the 60s. Um, I, I was lucky enough to be working in uh, at Old Trafford on the... I was a lift engineer, and we put the lift in at um, Old Trafford in that new... Um, Cantilever stand, the only one they had for the World mean, Cup. I don't even call it new. Not now. Not now, no. It was brand new then. <laughs> it was this like 65, wasn't it? They did it for the 65, World Cup. 65, yeah. It, they, they'd done it for the World Cup and uh, the firm I was working for put the lift in it. So, uh, yeah, so we was down there watching them training and all sorts of really. There was supposed to be two on standby every, every match and uh, it ended up about eight of us. <laughs> We went two at a time to get used to the commissioner that on the door that the boxes for the boxes, and uh, as I say, we uh, we all went in the end, and, he, and he, even the waiters used to put us in a box that was empty if the ferment turned up. So yeah, we it, it was a great time that the sixties, and uh, if you watch Nobby, watch your films of him, it's, it's brilliant because all the si middle sixties. Nobby was the one that stopped the other players. That any player that he had any good, he was with them, stopped them. Eusebio and all that. He had a real battle with Eusebio. I don't think Eusebio scored in open play, where he was an unbelievable goal scorer. Um, of course, we've all heard now since yesterday the, um, the comments about Nobby. Uh, with Bobby Charlton and not my hair old Bobby Charlton but when you look at uh, a player that made him as he said now since yesterday he'd, he'd be watching Bobby where he was and uh, he'd tackle a player and the ball would come to Bobby he was a brilliant player and uh, a good attacking footballer as well as um, a defender I uh, saw some uh, footage of him yesterday um, obviously after the news broke there was a few different reports Sky had put on and stuff like that uh, there's obviously hard tackles from him which he was, he was kind of famous for well he it? had a bit of bad eyesight he said <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, but there was, yeah. there was a few of them showing him dribbling. Uh, and oh, playing. Yeah. yeah. If you had to compare him to a modern day footballer, so people can get the impression of you know, what it was, he was, it wasn't quite a number six that you would have now, but he sort of operated in that sort of zone. Didn't yeah, he? attacking wing half, as he called him. Um, it was a, it was a, a little Duncan Edwards. You, you know, he, he so we used to play a back three, didn't we? And then there would be no, two. No, well, it was two them. full backs and a centre half, centre half and two wing halves. So they'd sort of sit in like the number six kind of position. Six, four, yeah, four and six, yeah. Well, he, he was six. Cred and attacking really, but he, he was one of those that he, he could. Uh, he'd be a, obviously a defending wing half, and but the way he broke, I, I, you know, you can't believe it. The size of him. And, and he broke well. He, he, sort of a Duncan Edwards used to break like that. Because don't forget, he was a, a defending wing half as well. Uh, Eddie Coleman at the time was the uh, attacker. Um, yeah, he, 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 it was a shame that he was um, didn't get into the 63 FA Cup. He, he was just kept out by setters at the time, Murray Setters. Else he got a full, a full Monty that year. Mm. Really full Monty. So, yeah, Nobby Styles. obviously, he won the World Cup with England. Um, him and Bobby Charlton are one of only two players. Um, I think, is it Callaghan was in the squad but wasn't on the pitch? Uh, one of the only two players to have won the European Cup and the World Cup uh, yeah. for England. Um, he is our local boy, a bit like Bobby was a, an academy graduate, but he was he was from Collierst. He was from a mile and a half away from where we are today. Oh, yeah, yeah, if that. Uh, he won the league, like I said, he, he he didn't play in the 63 final. But you just mentioned before we went on air, the dominance that United uh, exhibited uh, in the 60s. During, during that 60s, in that time, and what he exhibited when he was part of those teams. Wins the league title in 65, wins the World Cup, wins the league, wins the European Cup. Did his career peak for a short period? I don't think so. I, I, to tell you the truth, I, don't, I, I can't believe why he left in 70. When you think about it, in seventy, he was only twenty-eight, mm. um, and, and he, he was a very, very good friend of, of, of Bobby Charlton's. Was it, was it uh, Preston and um, Biddlesbury played for? Yeah, afterwards. Yeah, um, I'm wondering. I mean, Bobby, our hero, like me, and my brother, always went to Old Trafford. Um, he snapped obviously at uh, the the the, uh, six, uh, the seventy World Cup. Um, Ramsey took him off, which was unbelievable. He gave, he gave the field to Beckenbauer at the time. And I think we'd have gone through that. I, I, in fact, I think we'd have ended up in a final at least in uh, in 70. Bobby was very upset, as everybody could see on that match. And I'm wondering whether, because Bobby finished then, and I'm wondering why, uh, if Nobby did the same. Forget it. Of course, he was getting. To, he was twenty eight, but it, it, twenty eight is nothing for a footballer, really. especially a wing half. So, uh, I think I don't think he ever peaked. I think it, it had peaked if he'd have carried on. And uh, you know, for him to leave Old Trafford was unbelievable. With the the names that we all know, obviously, you, you chant and law your best. Nobby's seen as basically the, the unsung hero of that team, the one that kept it together, yeah. the, the Roy Keane almost. If yeah. you have to look at like ninety nine comparisons. Yeah, well, yeah, it's true. The um, if, if you looked at them, them matches in the sixties, which is coming up to his end because he left in seventy. Um, World we'll Cup in in sixty eight, and he, you know, he he kept Eusebio quiet, mm. and with United in the semi final that year, uh, that in the sixty eight one. Um, he, he was very, very well known and, and, and feared, actually. I'm sure he was feared. I would have been feared of him, the way he was tackling them days, you know, especially with his bad eyesight. <laughs> On that, I mean, we can joke about that, but he was a fearsome tackler, wasn't he? I think oh, that, yeah. from what we've seen, what I've seen of him, um, I don't think he'd have survived necessarily in today's game. I don't think those sort of tackles even exist in today's game. No, I don't know. It's, um... I don't know anybody like him or Key, you know, them type of players now. Um, he, he was that type of, yeah, he, he stood in the way, put it that way. You know, if he knew he wasn't, he wasn't going to, if, if they got past him, they'd beat him for speed and that. So I, I think he just stopped him and that was that, he was a stopper. 
Murray, Murray Satis would have done the same, really. You know, he was a good one. But, uh, yeah, there was nothing like Styles for that, for the size of him. Uh, Nobby got his start at United um, as one of the players that came through in the aftermath of Munich, obviously, the yes. decimation yeah. of the squad. Um, we have got a couple of quotes here, which I'm just going to read. Um, we've got one about the World Cup there. Have we got the one about Munich? No, we've not. Okay, no mind. Right, I'll read out the one that we've got about the European Cup then. So he says, There was a different feel to our celebration from the one that followed England's World Cup win. For Kiddo and me, and for John Aston Jr., the son of the coach, who had played so well on the left, there had to be a special intensity all of our own. We were the only Mancunians in the team, and in some ways, it wasn't so much of a triumph of football as the blood of our lives. We were kids when the Busby Babes were wiped out, and we felt the sorrow of the streets of our city. Yeah. Yeah, it was a terrible time. He, um... I was I was there on the day that they crashed at Old Trafford. I went right across the road, really. Um, yeah, it was a terrible time, and it must have murdered them lads that had just started coming through. There's another quote here. This is the quote he was talking about from Munich, and it's interesting, this, because it's actually hard to find any information about this, because it seemed like the club clammed up to just get through it, um, which is understandable. I had felt very much involved in the effort to make United live again, clearing snow from the pitch and cleaning the gym and get involved in practice matches. Like you said, he would have been 15, 16 at the time of Munich. Yeah, well, I was 16, yeah. yeah. Um, there were so many practice matches. It was as though Murphy wasn't prepared to give anyone any time to think. It was a time to run and to work and to burn our way through the crisis. If we paused, if we thought too much about it, thought too much about what happened, maybe we would be ruined. Yeah, it's, uh, I can't imagine the the lads that went out uh, that that played in that first match after Munich. Was Styles one of those? Was he, no, was he in that team? No, was he still a few years off. If, yeah, he was, he was only sixteen, wasn't he? But he they got, were they were young lads that oh, played. Oh yeah, yeah, like you know, they, uh, they was going to have time. Really, they was going to have time to get to you know to get into the first team. So whether they was seventeen, eighteen, whatever. They had to go in, and uh, but the, what they missed was the time to develop. Can you imagine them lads coming in at another two years? I mean, you spoke about this before that he's, you, those players missed on their development time. Yes, and I think that's why they didn't make it. Some of them yeah. they went in too quick. Too well, they had to do they too much pressure. Not enough. Oh, to, yeah. None of that managed sort of dipping in and out of the team that you would have got. And the, I, the I mean, you can imagine the other sides, can't you? You know. Um, as we always said, you you've got to be a bit hard, you know. You've got to take a tackle. You've got to give a tackle. And they was they, they would come into this team, or thinking they're going to play against great players from wherever. Edwards. No, Pay, but, but, no. I mean against when they come in the mm. team, and they was they knew great players, didn't they? Uh, but when they played against them, then immediately bang. Mm. It must have been unbelievable. Mm. They they think they're going to oh, have nice football and all this, and they get and they get clattered every time they go near the ball mm. because they think they were kids. Which they, they was. Yeah, they were. Yeah. You know, you well, know. even the the first team were kids. So when the first team's wiped out, what's left is literal kids. Well, it was definitely kids. Yeah, the, the uh, unbelievable youthful side, aren't they? Um, old man Roger Byrne. Captain of England as well, you know. He's in his twenties, wasn't he? He's in his twenties, yeah. But the old man, really. Four years, Duncan Edwards been playing for England. Twenty-one, he's dead. Mm. You know, it's a, it was a very hard to take at the time. Bobby Charlton was, I think, he was twenty or twenty-one at the crash. Um, but he'd been in the army, hadn't he? He'd, um, he'd missed a bit out, but he was an unbelievable player, so it, it didn't matter to him much. But what, what always surprised me about that team that won the European Cup after it, it they sorted it out a bit, there was only two or three players that he bought. All the rest was youth team in '68. I think there was three or four years from like '54 to '58. He didn't sign a single player. Yeah. Oh yeah, with the youths. But when you think about '68 side, there was only uh, Credend. Yeah. And Law. Well, Stepney. Didn't no, he, didn't, he didn't play. 
he, he was in hospital. Yeah. And Dunn, who would cost five thousand pound. Game's gone. And 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 there they are. All kids, all the youth kids mm. that we'd see we'd watched all the time coming up. But they, they did well for United. Uh, Johnny Ashton was unbelievable, wasn't he? The left winger. Uh yeah, it, it was a, it was great to watch, but that 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 sixty was unbelievable. It, um, destroyed in fifty eight, and in five years later they won the FA Cup, which is a lot of people say so. But but then um, two titles, them lads winning the uh, World Cup, and then the European Cup in sixty eight. Mm-hmm. Nob- Nobby didn't just um, play and leave. Uh, Nobby came back in 1988 yeah, yeah. or 89, um, stayed for four or five years coaching um, and is heavily responsible for a lot of the success of United's youngsters. Yeah. Eric Harrison, obviously, uh, one of the big names. Jamie Ra- Jim Ryan, another one. But for most of those players, I, I spoke briefly last night to Danny Higginbottom, who's done a bit of a tribute, but Gary Neville, David Beckham, Ryan Giggs, uh, Danny Higginbottom... Um, probably even all the way up through to Wes Brown, yeah. a lot of their first coaches was Nobby Styles. Yeah. Um, so you know Nobby's got a hand in all of the success that we've seen at this club. Um, and there's a quote here from him, um, which is talking about looking back on the World Cup win. He says, "Last summer I watched another World Cup from a hospital bed. Inevitably, my thoughts strayed back to the time when I felt as though I occupied a place near the centre of the world." As I followed the course of another great tournament, I marvelled all over again at the scale of good fortune in being at a certain place and at a certain time and in such good company. I thought all attention and worry before that final explosion of joy and relief sent me jigging across Wembley. Why do we care so much about the game that we play? Why did I sit up in my hospital bed and shout against doctor's orders? (laughs) Go on, you little bastard, boy. When one of the boys that I coached, Nicky Buck, clattered an Argentinian in a World Cup game because it's in our blood. We're English and we take this. We take a bit of knocking down. On leaving United, and we can leave it on this if you like, and if you, I'll give you another say, chance to say. If some hard time did follow my last official meeting with Matt after he told me I was going to be sold to Middlesbrough, I'm pleased to say that with hand on heart, I never regretted a second of my time at Old Trafford or my association with one of the greatest of all football managers. It was something that could never be accurately measured against a spawn pension I eventually granted by the club. Um, he later comments a little bit later about you know, uh, seeing the likes of what Giggs and Beckham were, were getting um, and you know, people getting 100 grand a week sort of salaries. Yeah, terrible, terrible shame, really. Nobby had to sell his medals, didn't yep. he? Um, now, thankfully, United, for once, managed to do the right thing and United didn't say anything <coughs> um, and just outbid everybody for his medals and gave them back. Um, and I think he donated them to the museum. Yeah. Um, yep. But they, they they sorted him out in, in terms of the medals. So I guess his medals are probably now be on display forever in the yeah, museum. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Um, There's a little story. Um, he, uh, Nobby was a big hero. He was a big hero of mine, but he was a big hero of my son, which was your dad, my eldest son. Um, and I was second him to Old Trafford from being when he was four or five years old. And as I say, we, we was um, working on the lift, or standing by on the lift. And this this day, uh, man about 67, I suppose, he'd be about seven or eight year old. Uh, we got in the lift, I had to ride with it. And... Um, there was Nobby Styles, Bill Folks, Bobby Charlton, and I, I think it was a businessman that was with Bobby, going up to the uh, boxes and down to the players' lounge, as they call it, a bar on the end, near the Stratford end. So I'm pulling Craig, he did like, and uh, I said, look, who's that? He said, Billy Folks. You know, watched the World Cup and everything by then. Uh, Bobby Charlton, he seen Bobby Charlton. And I said, who's that? And he went, looked away because there was Nobby with his big glasses on and his teeth in and a, a white Mac if I remember right and I said who's that though no, nothing he just put his head down so it, they got out of the lift and walked off down towards the players lounge and I said who was that he said don't know so it's Nobby Styles. oh he went mad so I was right come on took him all the way down there by the time we got there there was only Billy Folks outside 
talking to some of them. Well, look at this. Here's the United supporter. Because your dad had a, a scarf on and a bobby hat. Because, you know, he's all the boxes people. <laughs> the, the kids of four year old had sheep king coats on. So, anyway, I, I said, Can he mind you a bit, but Bill? He's, he's heroes. Nobby Styles. I think Billy wanted to hit him. Uh, I said, but he didn't recognise him in the lift. Can you get his autograph on the programme? Like, so he just kicked the door open and shouted, get him, Nobby, get out here. So he come out like, and uh, this is, for some reason, he is, you're his hero. Sign the, art, the uh, autograph, the uh, programme. So he did that. He said, now go and get all the lads to sign them. Which he did, went round, came out with it. He didn't know whether to sign it or not, Billy. <laughs> anyway, he signed it for us. Uh, he couldn't believe it, he did. He'd, he'd missed him, stood in the lift with him next to him. And, and he, I had to go and get him out of the bar to sign it. <laughs> yeah. Great time. But he, he, was, he, was, he was his hero, your, your dad's hero. Especially that dancer on Wembley, who watched that. I think he was at Saturday night at the time, 66, yeah. He would be. Uh, six year old, yeah. So there you go, that's um, a little story. A couple of little stories about Nobby, and uh, I'm very, very glad to have met him. Cheers for that, Pop. Magic. Thanks for listening. <laughs>